I think yeah, the issue is partly people can be easily taken in by an apparent precision of numbers. About 10 years ago, I wrote a book uh, called Taken by Storm, The Troubled Science, Policy, and Politics of Global Warming. My co-author was Christopher Essex, who's an applied mathematician at the University of Western Ontario, who has a long background in, in uh, climate modeling and also atmospheric physics work. And this was a point that, that we made, that um, if you don't have a precise underlying theory, doing all your calculations on a computer doesn't make your work more precise. It just means you can make your mistakes a lot faster than you did before, but there's still just mistaken numbers and, and all your, your speculations are still just speculations. But at the end of the day, the fact that the outputs come out in numerical form with, with seven decimal places, it, that doesn't mean the whole process is understood to that degree of accuracy. And that's, so I think people just need to understand, even if you don't have any real math background, when someone's presenting something that sounds speculative, but they're presenting it to three or four decimal places, it's still speculative. It's, it's just they happen to have done it on a calculator and um, come up with, with a number that precise. But um, it's an illusion of precision. And this was a point in my talk yesterday. I quoted Robert Pindyke's comment about the uh, integrated assessment models, that um, they create the illusion of a lot more precision and certainty than actually exists. And in that sense, it's actually quite dangerous in the policymaking process if people take these numbers much more seriously than they should.